All right, one thing that I messed up yesterday was we were talking about delay load imports, right? And we said delay load imports get filled in on demand. We were basically dealing with this situation, right? Right here, right? We were talking about how delay load imports, they start out with the address of a stub code in the, uh, in the delay load import address table, and it eventually gets filled in with the address of the real code. All right, so yesterday I showed this for MS Paint, and I was like, man, those values don't make sense. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't taking it into account uh, address-based layout randomization and realizing that these values that start out right here, they're absolute virtual addresses, and therefore, if this thing gets moved around in memory, before anything even starts, those will get fixed up if there's ALSR, if they got moved around. So when we talk about relocations, that'll make more sense. But I was just making sure I have this right. Let's see what we get. So, so I'm going to run MS Paint again. This is going to be the 32-bit version of MS Paint. <coughs> Do I have to install, do I have to run setup again? Shouldn't have to. All right, so here's the first thing to keep in mind. So MS Paint on disk, if we go up to its optional header and we look at its image base, MS Paint on disk has whatever this is, one million for its image base, right? And so inside the delay load import address table, it's got hard-coded values that are like 1 million, 17, you know, 100, what is that, 17,000, E-A-9, Anyways, it's got hard-coded addresses, which are obviously have the base address built into them. So this is, if we were to interpret this as an RVA, although it does have absolute virtual addresses built in here, if we were to interpret this as an RVA, so we subtract out X, you know, 1 million from it, we would say that this is at 17 EA9. And so that matters because what if we don't get loaded at hex 1 million? What if we get loaded at hex 2 million or we get loaded at hex E5000 or something like that? And so that's exactly what we're seeing when we actually are looking in memory. When we actually get loaded in memory, MS Paint gets loaded at base address E8000 instead of hex 1 million, right? And so I'll, I'll get your question in just a sec, Mike. I've got to finish this uh, example first. So because it gets loaded at E8000, the entries in the delay load import address table are going to be based at E8000 because the OS actually ends up fixing them up. So so this is the delay load import address table. And the entries are basically E8000 plus whatever the RVA would have been. So the RVA would have been 17EA9. So we do the math for that. 17EA9. This 17EA9 plus what the base address is E80000. That equals E97EA9. And that's exactly what we see in the delay import address table. So basically, all I'm trying to justify here is that you've got absolute virtual addresses hard coded into the binary on disk, which assume that it's going to be based on hex 1 million. At load time, when it doesn't get hex 1 million, it gets hex E8000. The OS has to go through and fix up all of these constants, just like I was talking about the OS fixing up constants that are hard coded into assembly. It has to fix up constants that are hard coded into the headers, and it just relocates them. It says, you wanted X1 million, you got E8000, and you know, take whatever the difference is between those two and add it to this constant so that everything still works out, right? So, for instance, I could go to this address and I could see that this is assembly for stub code, and like I showed yesterday, it's not as 
pretty is back in, oh, no, okay. I must have did it wrong yesterday then. So this is the stub code at this address, right? It's just like we kind of showed in the slides yesterday. It's a move some constant to EAX and then jump. And all these other stub codes are just move some constant to EAX and then jump, right? So anyways, I haven't actually run the code yet. So this is the delay load import address table before anything is actually run. Let's go ahead and run MS Paint. All right, so now MS Paint is actually running. I'm going to stop it, and you can see that some stuff already got filled in, and some stuff has not been filled in, right? Some stuff still has stuff in the range of E8 plus something, 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 right? So the key thing is now just to show, you know, that I can see even more things actually get loaded in de on demand and in response to my acting with the GUI. I'm just going to dump some of this memory. So this is dumping D words. I'm going to dump it at that address, the delay load import address table. I'm going to dump hex 20 fourth of bytes. So I want you to basically watch this thing at this offset 60. This is going to be something that when I go ahead and I switch over to, right now it's not filled in. So it's a delay load import that hasn't been called. The, the program has never called this function. So it still points at stub code. But once I go ahead and move around in the thing, it'll call whatever graphics routine it needed, and then it'll get filled in. So I'm going to let that go. We go over to MS Paint. Hopefully this is the right one. And then break back in. Do that same command. And there we go. The one at 60, whereas it used to be EAD713. Now it's 674, uh, et cetera. Right? So this is just showing on demand. You took some action. It caused the function to get called. It fills in the stub code pointer with the real code point. So just if we want to see what actual function that was that was called, enlist the nearby symbols. And it looks like it called GDI plus DLL. And it called the GDIP set smoothing mode function. So it didn't need to call that until I actually interacted with the program. So I've never done any programming against the Windows APIs. But you're saying there's these stuff methods that are generated. Are these done by the compiler, or are these explicitly created by the I think program? they're done by the linker, actually. But notionally, they're done by the compiler. It's not the programmer. It's just when you select to lay load this DLL, yeah. the compiler or linker puts code in there for the stuff. Um, so I have a question about the, uh, uh, yeah, the delay import descriptors. How do you find those in CF? So I, I know you I'm can't fine. find them in CFI oh, okay. before, right? right? Basically, so <laughs> right. The question is, how do you find the delayed import descriptor entries, right? And in, over in something like PE view, right? They're all nicely lined up right here. But how you really find them is that you go back to the <coughs> data directory, right? The data directory. I, I will bet you dollars to donuts that the data directory says 85 CCC is where the pointer to this table is, right? So going back here, data directory, 85CCC, right? So how do you find it in CFF Explorer? Well, the only way you can do it is you can, you know, go to the data directory, look for the delay import, whatever's in there, you know, treat that as a, you know, that RVA can be a, um, you have to do this process of converting RVAs to file offsets based on where it is in the section. And if it's not in the section, then just treat it like the base is zero. But yeah, that's basically okay. the way you have to do it here. 